Hello there, thank you for joining us. Welcome to Nightline. My name is Handy Gui. Let's dive into the news. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin unveiled the Malaysian Economic and Rakyat Protection Assistance Package, also known as PERMAI, its fifth economic stimulus package to date, worth 15 billion ringgit spread over 22 initiatives. According to the Prime Minister, the PERMAI initiative will be based on three main objections which are to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, to ensure the welfare of the people and to support the survival of businesses. Secara amnya, package bantuan PERMAI ini menambah baik inisiatif sedia ada yang masih berterusan dan juga mempercepatkan pelaksanaan inisiatif yang berkaitan. For the record, the government has implemented four economic stimulus package worth 305 billion ringgit, estimating more than 20% of gross domestic product or GDP. This is to help the people and the continuity of businesses as well as to protect the country's economy. The economic stimulus package overall involves 55 billion ringgit fiscal injected by the government. Right, the final phase of Bantuan Prihatin Rakyat BPN 2.0 will be sped up while ICNA registration will be simplified. This is one of the initiatives of Malaysian Economic and Rakyat Protection Assistance Package, PERMAI. Ensure that the people's welfare is looked after, the government is implementing some initiatives including the speeding up of payment for BPN 2.0 to January 21st. 11.1 million recipients will receive payments totaling 2.38 billion ringgit. The payment for Bantuan Prihatin Rakyat BPR Phase 1 will also be implemented involving 8 million recipients. The payment process for ICNR Category 2 is also easier as the applicants need only declare that they fulfill the criteria and send their supporting documents online. Furthermore, the government has also requested the Employees Provident Fund, EPF, to simplify the payment process, which will be made beginning January 26. The Social Welfare Department will also speed up its food basket program, which encompasses essential food items worth 100 ringgit for each eligible household with a total allocation of 50 million ringgit. In addition, the tax relief period for the purchases of mobile phones, computers and tablets, the period for free internet access by the telecommunication industry, as well as the sales tax exemption period on passenger vehicles will also be extended. The PERMAI stimulus package also includes a one-off monetary assistance for taxi and bus drivers and a special 10% discount on electric bills from January until March to six business sectors across the country. In the effort to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, the government has also provided an additional allocation of 1 billion ringgit for supplies, including additional regions, screening kits and personal protective equipments, of which 800 million ringgit will be allocated to the Ministry of Health. The government will also recruit an additional 3,500 healthcare personnel starting the end of this month in order to strengthen the country's healthcare system. A one-off assistance of 500 ringgit will be given to all frontline medical workers and 300 ringgit to other frontliners which will be paid in the first quarter of 2021. Right. The banking industry stands ready to assist borrowers and customers in light of the reintroduction of the movement control order in a number of states and federal territories. In a joint statement, the Association of Banks in Malaysia or ABM and Association of Islamic Banking and Financial Institutions in Malaysia said banks will continue to extend repayment assistance. This includes an extension of existing moratorium where applicable to individuals who have been affected by the MCO. They said banks have also announced an extension of the repayment assistance for victims of the recent floods in several states. It was noted that the extension will apply to all targeted repayment assistance schemes announced previously. Meanwhile, individuals in the bottom 40% of household income group or B40 who are registered in the Bantuan Sarahidup or Bantuan Prihatin Rakyat may request for a three-month deferment of installment. 
the impact of the current movement control order to the economy is expected to be manageable. The economy growth will continue to be supported by the strong export sector and a global trade recovery. Pertumbuhan akan terus disokong oleh sektor ekspor yang memberangsangkan dengan pemulihan perdagangan dunia. Pakej serangsangan ekonomi belanjawan 2021 dan pakej bantuan permai juga akan terus merancakkan penggunaan. Seterusnya, projek dan program yang berimpak tinggi dan mempunyai kesan pengganda yang besar akan terus memacu momentum pemulihan ekonomi. Muhyiddin said the government acknowledged that the implementations of MCO coupled with the emergency in force which may have raised some concerns among the people and the business community. He reiterated that this declaration of emergency is with the sole intention to curbing the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Not just mere empty promises, the government will help its students to repay the National Higher Education Fund Corporation PTPTN loan which is in arrears. For this purpose, an amount of 30 million ringgit has been set aside. Uh, sekarang ini baru saja selesai uh, perbincangan di antara Yayasan Sarawak dengan PTPTN. Uh, sudah ada formula bagi kita membantu budak Sarawak, eh, pelajar Sarawak yang mempunyai outstanding payment dengan PTPTN. Baru saja selesai. Uh, formulanya di antara PTPTN dengan Yayasan Sarawak di mana kita telah uh, memberi peruntukan 30 juta dan pihak kita Yayasan Sarawak bersama dengan Datuk eh, Dr Anwar Rafi'i kita telah berunding dengan PTPTN dan mereka telah mempunyai satu formula they have agreed on formula the incentive aims to help 9,634 students to settle 30% of their outstanding PTPTN loan. He said this during a press conference after handing over two buses donated by the state government to Muka Polytechnic and Metro Betong Polytechnic at Wisma Bapa, Malaysia. The Sarawak government has spent almost 600,000 ringgit to purchase the two buses with a capacity of 25 passengers each. This is following a request from students that was presented during the Berambeh dengan Abang Jo Town Hall session in conjunction with the Today for Tomorrow Carnival or T4T on July 6, 2019 in Muka and December 15, 2019 in Batong. A debt must be repaid. However, the current situation makes the process of repaying the National Higher Education Fund Corporation, PTPT, and very difficult. Nevertheless, with the help from the Sarawak government, the burden of the borrowers will be somewhat eased. Uh, jadi uh, kami menghargai lah inisiatif yang telah dibuat oleh kerajaan negeri itu. Jadi sedikit sebanyaknya uh, membantu mengurangkan beban kami, komitmen kami dalam uh, kehidupan selepas belajar lah. Kami pun bawa bekerja, gaji pun masih uh, basic lagi nak. Jadi uh, Alhamdulillah lah yang membantu kami sedikit sebanyak. Alhamdulillah, kami amat bersyukur kepada kerajaan negeri yang telah memberi insentif untuk uh, mengingankan beberapa pelajar-pelajar yang telah meminjam selamat itu. Bagi-bagi macam pelajar yang akhirat kami, buat habis pelajar pada tahun-tahun ini hati, buat dapat kerja contohnya. And then gaji pun ala kadar ada komitmen lain yang nak dibayar. Kerajaan Negeri Sarawak telah memperuntukkan sebanyak 30 juta ringgit bagi membantu para pelajar di Negeri Sarawak dengan membayar balik pinjaman perbadanan tabung pendidikan tinggi nasional PTPTN yang tertunggak. Menurut Ketua Menteri Datuk Petinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg, bantuan ini sebagai insentif seperti yang dijanjikan sebelum ini. Menurut Yayasan Sarawak, Kerajaan Sarawak membuat keputusan untuk membantu para pelajar yang mempunyai hutang dengan PTPTN bagi mengelakkan mereka terkait dengan permasalahan lain. Saya Connie Grace dan juga juru kamera Muhammad Gusti, TVS Kuching. Welcome back. Now on to the COVID-19 development. Sarawak today recorded two new deaths due to coronavirus in Miri and Cebu. This brings the state total death toll to 21 cases to date. Kes kematian ke-10 adalah kes ke-2065 
yang melibatkan seorang lelaki warga tempatan berumur 42 tahun dimasuk ke Hospital Miri pada 13 Januari 2021 kerana tidak sedar diri dan kes disahkan meninggal dunia pada 14 Januari 2021. Kes memang mempunyai komorbid penyakit seperti kencing manis, darah tinggi dan mengalami jengkitan hepatitis C. Kes kematian 21 merupakan kes ke-2005 seorang lelaki warga tempatan berumur 55 tahun. Kes berasal dari daerah Kenamit merupakan kontak kepada kes di kluster Pasai. Dato' Omar Douglas Ugahmas also informed that the state also recorded 100 new positive cases. Cebu recorded 37 cases, Beluru recorded 27, Batong 7, Miri 7, Kuching recorded 6, Bintulu 4, Selangau 4, Siraman recorded 3, Lubuantu 3, Serike 1 and Kenowit 1. This bring the total number of infections in the state to 2,211. Nationwide, 3,306 new COVID-19 cases were reported on Monday. Malaysia's cumulative total of COVID-19 cases now stands at 161,740. 73,000 households in Cebu, Cebu Division, which is now under the Movement Control Order, will be provided with food assistance. The state government, through the Food Supply Chain Subcommittee, will ensure the distribution of food assistance to affected areas comprising Cebu, Selangau and Kanawait. According to Deputy Chief Minister Datuk Amar Awang Tengah Ali Hassan, the process of distributing food will begin on January 20th in stages. The distribution process will be carried out by Cebu Divisional Disaster Management Committee in collaboration with various relevant agencies. We hope that the collaboration of all the parties, dan JKKK uh, ataupun NGO NGO yang lain selain daripada jabatan-jabatan uh, uh, yang berkenaan karena kita tidak mau uh, uh, ada yang tercicir mereka memerlukan bantuan tapi tercicir jadi kita memerlukan kerjasama with regard to the food supply, Uga, who is also the food supplies chain subcommittee chairman, has assured there is enough supply throughout the movement control order. In terms of logistics, Uga will ensure that the committees involved will identify remote areas needing assistance where food assistance will be delivered via air transportation. A total of 400 rooms from three local hotels in Cebu will be used as quarantine centres after the movement control order in the region ends, according to the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Datuk Abdul Karim Rahman Hamza. The agreement by three hoteliers to utilise the premises has received positive feedback from all parties. This serves as a solution for the lack of quarantine facilities and shortage of hotel rooms that have caused people under surveillance to undergo home quarantine. For now, no flights are scheduled to fly to Cebu during the movement control order period, except for domestic flights only. Abdul Karim also advised the people to play their roles in curbing the spread of the pandemic. Meanwhile, Senator Robert Lau said if the number of COVID-19 decreases, he expects flights to Cebu to be resumed. This is to help Sarawakians who are stranded out of state. As the number of cases come down, let's say we think a week, uh, it's come down to a uh, low number, then maybe the SEMC can review the MCO and uh, maybe allow for flights to come in already from KL to Cebu. Because there are people who are stuck uh, in KL, need to come back because uh, they run out of funds and in KL, no place to stay too. More than 500 individuals have registered to become volunteers for the COVID-19 vaccine clinical trials in Sarawak. However, State Health Department Director Dr. Chin said that not everyone who registered for the clinical trial will be selected. Dr. Chin said although it was earlier announced that the clinical trial was expected to start in early to mid-January 2021, the trial may commence at the end of this month.
Dr. Chin said the public will know of the results of the trial when they are announced by the sponsors, Institute of Molecular Biology of China Academy of Medical Sciences, or when published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. Malaysia is one of the countries selected by the Institute to collaborate with them in the field of medical science during this pandemic and has allocated 3,000 subjects for this clinical trial. Sarah General Hospital, under the supervision of the Malaysian Ministry of Health, was chosen as one of the nine clinical research centres in the country to conduct the world-class clinical trials. Teachers are urged to be more creative in the implementation of home-based teaching and learning, PDPR, instead of focusing solely on the online method. The president of the Sarawak Bumiputra Teachers Union said the Ministry of Education did not specify online teaching as the only method that has to be used. He added teachers are given leniency to use any suitable methods based on the situation and location. Jadi bukannya uh, uh, apa nama online ataupun pembelajaran secara maya itu menjadi keutamaan. Kalau kawasan itu boleh Capaian internet yang baik amat digalakkan menggunakan uh, secara maya. Tetapi kalau kawasan internet itu capaiannya uh, tidak baik, maka guru-guru ada alternatif yang lain untuk uh, meneruskan pembelajaran mereka secara PDPR ini. With regards to this, KGBS is confident in the teachers' ability to perform their duties according to their abilities. Meanwhile, for KGBS, the postponement of the face-to-face -face school session could provide opportunities to students who are sitting for examination to study in comfortable conditions during this pandemic. Jadi di situ, pihak sekolah akan dapat menggunakan sepenuhnya kemudahan dan prasarana ruang yang ada di sekolah tersebut untuk memastikan bahawa calon-calon SPM nanti apabila mereka uh, turun ke sekolah ataupun uh, 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 sekolah bermula secara bersemuka mereka dapat uh, menggunakan ataupun mengamalkan SOP uh, penjarakan fizikal dengan lebih lebih baik. Welcome back. The investigation into the case involving a 16-year-old girl who claimed to have been raped by a male suspect while being locked up at a police station in Miri on January 9th is expected to be completed this week. This was said by the Sarawak Police Commissioner Datuk Aidi Ismail. And to, uh, pick up, uh, ID explained that the investigation is being conducted by the Sarawak Police Contingent Headquarters and Miri District Police Headquarters. Meanwhile, on the incident of a fight between two groups of teenagers in front of a hotel in Kuching on Sunday, the head of the Sarawak Criminal Investigation Department, Senior Assistant Commissioner Matzani, said the incident was caused by a misdemeanor. According to the case, a total of 17 local individuals aged between 17 to 19 years old have been detained. 15 out of the 17 individuals arrested were found to be positive on drugs. The case is being investigated under Section 148 of the Penal Code for Rioting. The Sarawak General Operations Force, GOF, achieved great results throughout 2020 when it managed to seize a total of 39,704,799 ringgit worth of contraband in five different operations. According to its commander, Senior Assistant Commissioner Mancha Atta, the five operations were Op Lawas, Op Batas, Op Kazana, Op Libas and Op Bandeng, which saw a total of 168 
Meanwhile, Sarawak Criminal Investigation Department Chief Senior Assistant Commissioner Che Ali said the index crime rate for 2020 has shown a reduction with 5,874 cases as compared to 6,024 cases for the same period in 2019. Meanwhile, for the Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Department, a total of 199 arrests were made last year involving drivers who committed offences under Section 40. 5 bracket A of the Road Transport Act 1987, namely driving with an alcohol content exceeding the prescribed limit. The statistics showed a 46% increase in 2020 as only 136 arrests were made in 2019. Be prepared to face music and receive punishment. Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali, today reminded civil servants that stern action will be taken against them if they violate the standard operating procedures of the movement control order. He said legal action decided by the government applies to everyone found violating the standard operating procedures, including civil servants. Meanwhile, Mohamed Zuki stressed that every decision made and implemented by the government is to break the chain of transmission of the COVID-19 pandemic following the increasing number of positive cases recently. Adnan also said that no individual can escape legal action, including civil servants and government retirees. The movement control order is currently being enforced in seven states, namely Penang, Selangor, the federal territories, namely Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya, Malacca, Johor, Sabah and Kelantan until January 26. Meanwhile, in Sarawak, the movement control order is being implemented from January 16 to 29 in three districts of the Cebu Division, namely Cebu, Selangau and Kanawit. The post-flood cleaning program loca located in Kampong Sinar Budi Batukawa has been completed. With over 50 years of experience facing floods, Hamidian Bustaman has learned to remain calm throughout the flood situation. Uh, Banjir ini tidak uh, memberi uh, masalah lah, kerana kami berpengalaman selama 50 tahun uh, mengatasi banjir uh, kampung Sinan Budi lama ini. According to Maimuna, there is always joy to be had in the midst of uncertainty. Setiap kali banjir, kampung itu Ada seronoknya lah, ada tapi ya lah. Kalau seronoknya kita macam air bila naik 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 ke kampung, sampai ke jalan besar. Uh, seronok lah nangga nampak main main sampan, kayak nyapu sepu sepu kampung. Tapi dalam dalam nyam main main nyapu pun nyam macam nyelamat orang juga bang anta orang ke pusat, anta uh, ngeliling kampung nyam cari cari siapa yang mau pindah. Lah. Saya sekarang berada di kampung Sinar Budi Lama. Hari ini sudah selesai aktiviti uh, kekemasan pasca banjir di kawasan kampung ini. Dalam pada itu, penduduk di sini sudah membuat persiapan awal ketika uh, menyambut musim banjir ini. Kerana penduduk di sini sudah hampir 50 tahun uh, terkena banjir. Dan uh, balai bomba yang terlibat adalah uh, balai bomba daripada Batu Lintang. Dan apa yang menarik hari ini, balai bomba Batu Lintang menggunakan kaedah open water source iaitu uh, sumber air terbuka dengan menggunakan kaedah penggunaan air daripada sungai berdekatan untuk membersihkan kawasan ini. Baik, itu saja laporan dari kami. Saya Karazari Afindi dan juru kamera Faitungah Morni. Laporan untuk TVS. Brazil will begin mass vaccination against COVID-19 starting Wednesday. Prior to that, the Brazilian government will begin to distribute vaccine throughout the country starting early Monday morning. The decision came after Brazil's health regulatory agency anonymously approved the emergency use of the CoronaVac vaccine from Chinese laboratory Sinovac as well as the AstraZeneca University of Oxford vaccine. The vaccine will be delivered by the Brazilian Air Force to strategic points in each state and on Wednesday, vaccination will begin throughout the country. The Brazilian government has procured 6 million doses of the CoronaVac vaccine to be distributed throughout the country. Despite the vaccine program, the minister urged the population not to relax in preventive measures. Well, that concludes the Nightline. With that, I'm Hendigui. Thank you for tuning in. Have a pleasant night.